Right, so let's look at some more examples on the chemical kinetics. In this example, we're looking at where two molecules basically combine to give one molecule where it's just a combination of those two things. So it's C2F4 combines to give C4F8 um, in the gaseous state. And it says this reaction has a rate constant of something per molar per second. And then we have some questions to answer. So the hint or the what gives it away is this unit of the rate constant. And that implies that this is a second order reaction. So you know this is a second order reaction. Why do we know that? Because a rate always have to ha has to have units of molar per second. A rate meaning something like kilometers per hour, so something per time, and in this case it has to be concentration per time. And if it is in the rate constant, and a rate otherwise is always something multiplied by a concentration, and in this case the K is given in per molar per second. The question is, how do we get that? Because we already have the per second. It means we will need to have an M squared there. So that means we have a second order reaction there. Okay. So that's what we figured out thus far. We have a second order reaction. So let's start with A. Starting with a certain amount of mole in 2 liter and no product, what will be the concentration of the C2F4 after one hour? All right, so that's a basic uh, starting point. So we know it's a second order equation. So we know the rate is given as an expression of K, concentration of the reactant, C2F4. It's a second order reaction, so it's 2. And we're given the amount of mole and we're given the volume. So it means you need to calculate the concentration. So the concentration, well, let's write it in the form that we needed. So C2F4 is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume. And you should get 0 0.0675 molar. And this, of, of course, is the initial concentration. We're told starting with, so that's the initial concentration. Right, and you can go look up the initial or uh, the integrated rate law for a second order reaction. We can quickly derive it. But the initial or the rate law for a second order reaction is C2F4 T, or 1 over that, is equal to KT plus 1 over the concentration of C2F4 naught. Uh, you'll see I just quickly have rearranged it already. We have K, we know it's one hour, and we have the initial concentration. So we can put in our values. K is given as 0 0.0442 per molar per second. The K is in per seconds. We have one hour. One hour is also known as 3,600 seconds. All right, so I hope everyone knows how to convert that. And initial concentration, we just calculated as 0 0.0675 molar. You're going to get a value there of per molar. So... On the right hand side, you get a value, a thing of per molar. So you have one over concentration is equal to something per molar. And of course, you swap, so your answer is going to be in molar. So that's correct. So C2, if for at time one hour is equal to 5.75 times 10 to the minus 3 molar.
Okay. Hmm. So B, what percentage of the original amount of C to F E will be left after one hour? So basically just asking us what is the ratio? So we both know what is both of these. We know what is the concentration after one hour. We know what the initial concentration is. So um, the percentage left of anything is always what it is currently divided by what it was initially multiplied by 100. So it would be the C2 F4 after an hour divided by the initial concentration of C2 F4 multiplied by 100% equal to 8.5 2%. Of course, everything is three significant figures in this example. So, right. So that's the percentage left. Uh, percentage, maybe we should put in here C2, F2, F4. Left. C, what percentage of the original amount of C2, F4 has been consumed after now? So that's just basically B, but asked in the the opposite way so how much has been consumed so if there's 8.52 percent left then we basically <laughs> we've consumed a hundred percent minus that so um, in C we can say therefore the percentage consumed equal to a hundred percent minus our 8.52 well whatever your your non-rounded value of there was and then you round here to 91.5 percent you can of course also go the route of say percentage um, consumed is um, C0 uh, N minus initial divided by initial and then do that route um, if you understood what that meant. Okay, so then D says what will be the concentration of C4F8 after one hour? Okay, so now it asks something about the product for the first time. So C4, C2, F4 consumed. What do we know about that? Is going to be equal to the amount that we had initially minus the amount that we have consumed or what we have at one hour, one hour. I don't know why I just changed the unit, but anyway. And that will give us 6.18 times 10 to the minus two molar. Right, so we know how much C2F4 has been consumed. So from that, we can then use the stoichiometry to determine how much product has been formed. Right. So then since the reaction equation is 2C2F4 produces 1C4F8, it means that the concentration of C4F8 after one hour must be equal to half the concentration of C2F4 that has been consumed. And why, for the first time ever, can we basically say concentrations can be halved and whatever by stoichiometric numbers? It's because this is in a closed reaction vessel and its only reactant gives product. There's no other reactants and products involved here. And that's why it's directly relatable. 
is a special case where we can do that. So you'll end up with 3.09 times 10 to the negative 2 molar. So essentially, what you calculated is you calculated how much is consumed and hence how much is formed and related that by the stoichiometry. You could go the other way. You can calculate how much is consumed, go back to number of moles, and then relate the number of moles and calculate the concentration again. But you'll see it works out with the same thing because of the special case that it is. Right. E. Determine the half-life of this reaction based on the original amount of C2F4 present. Now you can look up the half-life for a second-order reaction, but we can quickly derive the half-life of a second-order reaction. We know um, at T equals T a half. It implies that the reactant concentration is equal to half the initial reactant concentration. Right. So in terms of this equation, um, remember we're working here with C2F4. So it means that we're looking at concentration C2F4. Four T equals to KT plus one over concentration C two F four zero. The one that has a T, we can substitute in half the one that is zero. So in other words, we write here one over a half concentration C two F four. 0 equals to k. When that is the case, we're looking at the half-life, so t a half plus 1 over c2 f4 naught. So you'll see if you quickly solve that, so you'll get 2 over c2 f4 0. Minus 1, so in other words, you'll end up on this side with 1 over concentration C2 F4 0 is equal to K T a half. And that means T a half is equal to 1 over K concentration C2 F4 naught. Right. And that's generally true for any second order concentration, like in any second order reaction. You just have one over K concentration of the initial reactant, initial reactant concentration. So we can plug it in. Uh, the half life, so that is one over K is, uh, what is K again? It's this 0 0.04. For two, of course, remember your units. The initial concentration is 0 0.0675. You should get a rounded value of 335 seconds. So that's how long it takes the concentration to halve. All right, so that's the half life of the reaction. The last question. F asks us, without doing any calculations, determine how long it will take for the ha for half the C to F4 present after one hour to disappear. And the reason the question is stated in such a way is if you look at the half-life expression over here. Right. What do you notice about it? It shows the half-life expression is only dependent on the rate constant and the initial reaction concentration. That initial reaction concentration is the thing there way at the beginning. It's not to do with anything that happens thereafter. So T a half is only proportional to 1 over 
the initial reactant concentration. So it doesn't care whatever concentration you take. So after an hour, the concentration that you have, the amount of time it will take for that concentration to halve again will still be 335 seconds. Therefore, it will take 335 seconds for it to halve. So what this half-life indicates, because it's independent of concentration or any of the concentration terms, any concentration at any point, it will take that amount of time for it to reach half of that value. So whether or not it's the initial concentration, a concentration one hour in, two hours in, 14 hours in, it will take so long for that concentration to half. Okay. So that's some uh, basic information on second-order reactions using the rate law. That's about as extensive a question on second-order reactions as you can get, covering almost all the bases. Um, and especially important points on the half-life um, of a reaction. All right. Thank you for watching.